Hate is a strong word, a word that I reserve for specific hockey teams and for guitars that I passionately dislike. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about nine guitars that I can't stand. And you know what? If you like any of these guitars or even own any of them, this is only my opinion. You can feel free to go off on me in the comment section. To start things off, the Strat Acoustic and Telacoustic series by Fender. And as far as I can tell, they've been discontinued. So I guess I'm beating the dead ax here, but back when I worked at a music store, we usually had tons of these in stock. They're Tele and Strat shaped guitars meant to give you an acoustic sound with an electric feel. However, they sounded horrible. You'd have been better off attaching a guitar neck to a cardboard box. They felt cheap. The body was made of this rough, horrible plastic. And in my opinion, they looked terrible too. On top of that, they retailed for like $500, which you could easily use to buy yourself a decent real acoustic. I hope I never see one again. Next is the guitar I borrowed from my neighbor when I started guitar about 18 years ago. It was made by a company called Nevada. It was a cheap, and let me emphasize cheap, Strat knockoff. It hadn't had a string changer set up in its existence. And when you're a beginner guitarist, the last thing you want is a guitar that fights against you. That's exactly what this thing did. The action was way too high and the neck was bowed like nuts. It made playing Ode to Joy way harder than it needed to be for my wimpy 13 year old fingers. I didn't know any better though. I just figured guitar was really hard. I eventually upgraded to a blue Squire Strat and my life improved greatly. Moving on is a guitar I once saw in a shop in Nashville. But before I tell you about it, let's talk about two things that are not enjoyable. Number one, tuning a guitar with a finicky trem system. You tune one string, which pulls on the springs, putting the strings you already tuned out of tune, fairly annoying. Number two, tuning a 12 string, which is twice as annoying as tuning a six string. Ain't no one got time for that, even though they do sound great. Well, this guitar, you guessed it, was a 12 string with a trem. Some people just want to see the world burn. I picked it up out of morbid curiosity, and of course the thing wasn't in tune. I spent many a minute fiddling with it until I eventually noped the heck out of that store in a frustrated state and went for Southern Barbecue which was quite enjoyable. Next is a guitar that I never saw, but heard about through a friend named Phil. He's an older guy and he spent a lifetime in music, owning a number of amazing instruments through the years. One of these guitars was a 1957 Black Beauty Les Paul, the kind that go for $100,000 plus on Reverb.com. Well, he fell on some hard times and had to sell this sweet, sweet baby girl to another guitarist he knew. A few days later, the guitarist he sold it to calls him up and told Phil to come over and check out a mod he did. If you're a gearhead or have any love for vintage instruments, you might want to skip over the next bit of this video. So Phil went over to this character's house and found out that he had installed a Floyd Rose in his former guitar. To do this, he routed out a sizable cavity in the body and shaved off some of the neck. Phil says he still has nightmares about this and I too have secondhand horrors that haunt me. Okay, now let me tell you about another Les Paul that bothered me deeply. I was working in the music store and one of the best things about this gig was when someone came in with an old beat up Gibson or Fender case, you never knew what kind of goodie was inside. Well, one fateful day, a fellow walked in with a tattered old case that said Gibson on the side. My heart started beating. He traded in a Les Paul from the 80s that we were gonna sell for $800. I watched another employee process the transaction and as soon as he was done, I took the guitar to the back room, excited to try it out and it played horribly. It wasn't set up poorly or had dead strings or anything like that. It just felt like a cheap guitar, which was apparently the case for a lot of the Gibsons in the 80s. It had a weird bevel on the neck behind the headstock that just felt wrong to me and it didn't get any better when I plugged it in. It sounded flat. It was just a hot mess of a guitar. It sat on display for a few weeks. I picked it up a number of times and tried to like it because at that price, it seemed like a steal for a vintage Les Paul. But every time I played it, it just annoyed me. Now, I don't mean to rip on Gibson too hard. I love a lot of their instruments and I've had nothing but positive experiences with the people who work there. But sometimes you gotta dish out the tough love. On that note, I do not care for the robot tuner guitars. Last year, I shot a video at the Gibson showroom where I tried out almost every guitar they had there. Really great experience, but it also meant I had to tune about 100 guitars, 600 strings. When they were slightly out of tune and the robot tuners worked, it saved me about 10, 15 seconds per instrument. But when they were way out or there was something wrong with the mechanism, it turned into a huge pain. I remember on one guitar, there was a tuning peg that was stuck spinning. It started detuning and never stopped. Some say it's still detuning to this day. After spending a lot of time with a lot of different robot tuners, I came to the conclusion that they're more of a nuisance than they are a benefit. Glad Gibson ended that experiment. Next up is that Gretsch acoustic guitar with a trem bar. I like Gretsch's, I like trem bars, but something about this just rubs me the wrong way. I don't know why, and I don't care to say much more about it. Moving on, we have some guitars that are decent instruments. I just have bad associations with them. The Alvarez Beginner Model Acoustics. There's one year in my life where I taught guitar full-time. I had something like 40 students over the course of the week, and a lot of it was just glorified babysitting. I had a lot of beginner kids who had no interest in music whatsoever, and when that's the case, there's only so much you can do. I feel like their parents just wanted to get rid of them for half an hour, so they sent them to guitar lessons. The music school offered a six-week trial program where for a certain rate, you got six weeks worth of lessons 
lessons as well as a loner guitar. These guitars were the Alvarez beginner models. They were never cleaned, never got new strings, and were covered in the filth of a thousand dirty child fingers. I had to tune them every lesson. I don't like germs. I don't like dirty guitars. This is the only association I have with these instruments, so they're forever ruined for me. Last on my list are band guitars, which are banjos that are strung and tuned like guitars. They remind me of Canadian pop country music, which besides a few cool artists, is a cheaper version of American pop country music, which I don't really care for on the best of days. Up here in the Great White North, there don't seem to be nearly as many banjo players, so bands will hire guitar players to play these abominations instead. Just make the effort to play a real banjo, it's not that hard to play those cliched country licks anyways. Okay, that about wraps it up, and I gotta be honest, this video was rather cathartic. If you like any of these guitars or happen to own any of them, it's all good, this is just my opinion, and lord knows I've had enough hate directed towards my sweet, precious reverse flying V. But we don't care about them, do we? And if you have a guitar that you have an irrational hatred towards, let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I want to remind you that for the entire month of December, you can use promo code Samurai Santa for 10% off everything at shops SamuraiGuitars.com. That also includes this new three-quarter length baseball tee that I just added to the collection. Big thanks to everyone who supports my channel on Patreon. I'm Samurai Guitarist and I will see you again soon.